Hello everybody, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at the ship set from the Marine Morphers line. We have a battleship, a hovercraft, and a submarine. This set also comes with these two tiny little tanks, and the tanks are actually pretty neat. They're well molded, they look good, and well, they're neat. They're just cute little tanks, and I quite like them. There's just one problem. You can't put them or attach them to any of the vehicles. The one positive thing is they're Lego compatible. I'm not even joking. These things can connect to Legos with no problem. The directions do state that the tanks are supposed to go on the hovercraft, but they can't peg in anywhere. There, there is not a single spot on this hovercraft that they can actually peg in. So why are they here? I don't know. Oh, and if you hadn't guessed, all of these combine into one giant robot, just like the Weapons Morphers set that I recently reviewed. Yeah, can't fit the tanks on those or on that combined mode either. In terms of aesthetic design, the hovercraft looks pretty darn good and very accurate to, well, real hovercrafts that I've seen, which honestly isn't that much. The only real hovercraft I've ever or I know about is the one that used to go through or go across the English Channel. Yeah, the overall look works well. I do like it. Got the skirt down here, and then you've got the tower up top and all the fans. Yeah, it's a well-molded, well-realized hovercraft. Transformation for our little hover friend is first come to the, well, the tower and pull it away from the body and just rotate it up like that. Come to the sides and unpeg the rear of the hovercraft mode thusly. The directions say you're supposed to take the entire front part of the hovercraft mode and pull it apart, and then we'll do something with this in a minute. Then fold all the fans off to the side, bring these large sections around, come to the back, open up the backpack, and flip up the giant robot head. And that flips around that panel. And then you can line everything up, get that all pegged back in, and fold the head down like that. Come down to the arms and simply unfold the arms from the rest of the body. So there's the top part of the robot mode. Oh, and next come to these little turrets and just fold them up and slide them back like that. And well, that's the upper torso. Let's get to the legs. The front of the vehicle mode can be transformed by first grabbing the front and splitting it in half. Come to the top of the deck and flip it up like that. Come to the front of the skirt and fold it down like that. And then there is a leg panel or leg that accordions out like that. And reach inside and flip this yellow piece around. Fold the shin up. Bring that yellow piece back and then flip out that section to form a toe. So then the leg will sit kind of like this. And this acts as the heel and that's the toe. Once you have both legs transformed, grab the hips, push them together, and then reattach to the torso. The robot mode we end up with looks pretty good. I really like the blue with the dark, or I should say bluish green, with the bright yellow and the silver, it works nicely. Unfortunately, the hips have a really bad tendency to come apart, and these mid-tummy guns have a really bad habit of, well, falling out of place. Overall, it's an okay robot mode. That head sculpt is really nice, too. I, I like that head sculpt quite a bit. It's definitely got a little something to it. It's also the head that's used in the combined mode. Overall, I like the look of this guy. I, I really do. It's not the most stable figure in the world, but I like the look. It's definitely got a vibe. Posability wise, it's uh, it's okay. Head is on a ball joint, and then his neck does all the weird stuff. Got ratchet and shoulders, and every time I move the ratchet, the um, backpack falls off. And then it's got so limited in and out. There is a hinge. You could see it right there inside the shoulder. And then there's a swivel underneath that. And then the elbows, well, 
They look like they'll bend 90 degrees, but they don't. No fist articulation, unfortunately. No torso articulation. Legs can kick forward a bit, and wow, those knees are loud. And they kick back, and they can do the splitsies. Yay! So it's not the most poseable thing in the world. That's okay. Size-wise, it currently scales with a leader class Studio Series figure. So we've got Grimlock here, and then we've got Commander Class Ultra Magnus. Who, yes, I, I really do need to shoot a review of him. So overall, Hovercraft Guy is pretty okay. Not the best, but okay. Now, moving on to the battleship, I think the battleship of the three is my favorite in terms of ship mode. It just looks so cool. And it even comes with its own flight deck. Yes, it comes with its own helicopter. Yes, it does. It's just a cute little helicopter. And unlike the tanks, this helicopter has a little peg hole that goes on that peg right there. And the helicopter, it's very, very cute. I like the look of it. Now, the helicopter might look familiar to eagle-eyed viewers. This is the helicopter from the battleship. This is the helicopter from one of the other Marine Morpher sets that I own, specifically the aircraft carrier, one of the aircraft carriers. Yeah, it, it's the exact same thing, so they're reusing parts. That's okay. I am quite fond of this battleship mode, and I actually really do appreciate the fact that it comes with these giant guns on the bottom so that it can actually sit nicely on a table. It being ra ra raised up, rised up, yes, raised up like this, I think looks really cool. Now, let's see what it looks like without the gun bits that aren't used that much. All right, there's the boat. It rocks. It's a rocky little boat. Yep. It's gonna capsize, oh no! Transformation for the boat is a little bit more complex than the hovercraft, but if you kind of guess how this is gonna transform, we've got a head stored in here. These will become the shoulders and the arms, and the back of the boat will become the legs. And to start off with, just kind of split that back part, red part, Turn those up and get them pegged into the sides all the way around like this. And then come down to the gray parts that are just above that. And you're supposed to be able to wiggle them and push them down, but really just grab the entire rear of the boat and split it apart lightly. And that will free up this panel underneath, which flips, flips down around and then folds up and pegs into place. And now we've got some legs freed up. Take this tower section, I think that's the radar tower section, and rotate it outwards like that. And then grab the little gray pieces we were trying to move earlier, and those will flip down and turn around. And these are actually the feet of this robot mode. So then we kind of just stand it up and uh, yeah, that looks ridiculous. Next, come to the gold portholes and push on them to flip them up and out of the way. And then that will enable you to grab the sides and kind of wiggle them out. And gee, those look like arms, don't they? Those will fold out and then we split the bow in half. And if you've got like a spudger, this is the time to use it because I'm fingers are just mangling things. And if the front of the boat comes off, that's okay. That's That chunk that slides off is part of the transformation for the combined mode. I'm just getting that back in place is... There we go. Got it. All right. So fold out the shoulders and they will peg into place in these little nubs. And then we can Fold the entire tower open, flip out the head, flip that up, fold that antenna down, and fold out the fists, and pull them out while getting the shoulders in place. And finally, take the giant guns, and they will peg in 
to the outside of the shoulders. And like that. Of the three, this is my favorite robot mode simply because it just looks cool. And it really makes me think of what a broadside in modern day ship would look like. It's a very, very cool looking robot mode. I, I know I keep saying this, but I like it a lot. It, it's, it is cool. It is weird, however, that there is a peg on the right forearm for the helicopter. I no idea why. The head sculpt is very good in this mode. I love the blue, the silver, and then the charcoal on the head. And the actual molding for the head is excellent. And if I'm honest, it kind of has the vibe that my merchant marine grandfather had. Just grumpy. <laughs> Just grumpy. The cannons may be mounted on each forearm, and this is kind of how I prefer to display it with the forearms having the cannons mounted there. I think that looks very cool. Now this is the best pose I'm able to get out of this thing. It is limited, and we'll talk about posability here in a second, but I can't argue with it. It looks pretty good. It's just a little bit, you know, when you pose it in a way and you're like, okay, I'm not gonna touch it because it's just bad things are gonna happen. I did forget to fold these little gold pieces back down. I had them folded up like that. The directions say fold them down, but that looks good, and that equally looks good. So let me know down in the comments which way you think looks better. All right, posability time. Head is on a ball joint that has quite a bit of range of movement. Shoulders are a little weird. There is a hinge for the transformation in the armpit, and then that does not lock into place that well, and it is ratcheting. And then there's a ratcheting joint that attaches to the shoulder, and then the shoulder itself is a ball joint. Swivel underneath that, bend at the wrist is 90 degrees without the cannon. It's very poseable, but it has a bad habit of just coming unpegged. I would love it if there was a way to peg this into place so it doesn't flop about. But there really isn't, so uh, we're just kind of left with floppity floppity. It always moves every time I pick it up. Hips are where the thing has trouble. So you have in and out movement at 90 degrees. Then there's another joint. That's for the combined mode. It is ratcheted in and out. It is ratcheted forward and back, but it's very limited forward kick potential because of uh, the smokestacks on the crotch. Bend at the knee is also ratcheted, a little over 90 degrees. There is another joint in the shin, but that's for the tr co combination, and the shin can swivel, and then the feet swivel side to side, and that's it. That's all she wrote. All right, everybody, the last figure in the set is this wonderfully detailed submarine. This is a Chinese nuclear submarine, and it looks absolutely fantastic. I love, love the way they've done this, and just the overall feeling of it in the hand is really solid. It's freaking huge, too. I mean, come on. From the tip to the front, we're talking 16 inches here. I mean... That, that's pretty big. The detail work on the sub is absolutely fantastic. I mean, just look at the different blowholes they've got going on here, and then, the, and then the bridge and the towers, and just the overall look of it is absolutely stunning. If you're wondering what all these little indentations are, these are for the, or I should say they're the blowholes. They were the part of the submarine that lets in and lets out air so the thing can, you know, surface and go <laughs> down into the water. And yes, the little propeller at the back, it does spin. It doesn't spin great, but it does spin. And along the back top of the sub, you can see all the missile tubes. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have 12 missile tubes. Yeah, this, this, this thing could start something. And then up front, we've got the torpedo tubes. And I think those are actually giant lights, but these right here, those are torpedo tubes. 
Transformation for this thing is bonkers. To start off with, we're gonna come to the back of the unit and just pull the entire back off and then grab it and <laughs> it, it does open up, really it does because there is a giant old missile in here. We have to pull that out, and close, ah, close that up and try not to drop it, and then just put the missile off the side. And then come along the back of the unit and just get your finger in there and split the back of the unit apart like that, and then pull the sides away. Now, there is some rather interesting origami going on back here. Take those rear sections that are the absolute back part of the sub, bring them out, turn them around, and flip them up into place, and then take these black parts and flip them out, flip the entire section around, and then this will peg into that other section. We can close this up on top of it, like that. And then come to the bottom here, fold it out and in, and flip out a toe. And there is one leg that we want to turn around the, so it's pointing the other direction. And do the same thing on the other side. I have to give the designers of, the, of this figure credit because this is a really neat design and it works. It's not hard to transform, it's just cool. Now for the rest of the transformation. Grab the bridge, pull it up, swing it around, push it back down and peg it into place. Come up to the front of the sub and unpeg the, and split apart the front of the sub like that. And then we got these floppy bits going on. So you bring them up, bring this down, and then there is a hand in there. You reach inside, bring out the hand, and flip it out and around. And I had forgotten what you want to do with these big pieces here is they collapse in and there are slots inside that blue chest piece that they will peg into. And there's also supposed to be on this side a peg hole. It's not there. So you kind of have to just futz with it. So you can wedge the left shoulder into place. It doesn't completely line up, but you can wedge it in there, and there is some clearance for that peg. But the directions actually show there being a peg hole there. Lastly, there are these two pegs on the back of the left shoulder, and that pegs in to the propeller, and there we have the robot mode. In terms of look and cohesiveness, the robot mode works very well. In terms of actual play value, Eh, not so much. We'll get into that in a little bit. I love the design, though, and the overall look of it. And I do appreciate the slight asymmetry you've got going with the propeller actually being on the back left shoulder. Head sculpt is excellent. I mean, that looks like a Decepticon with a submarine attached to his forehead. I really do appreciate it. And it looks more, I guess, evil than the other two do. In terms of posability, head is on a ball joint, shoulders are ratcheted, and then hinges, but they can't go down all the way. There is a swivel at the upper arm, and then there is what appears to be a ratchet, but it, it doesn't ratchet. There is torso swivel that is slightly ratcheted. The legs can kick forward and can kick back, and they are ratcheted. They can kick out all above a 90 degrees. The bend of the knees, totally ratcheted. And then the feet do have side to side movement, but no forward and back. The issue I have with the playability though is with the fists. They don't peg in, they just kind of sit here and rest here. I've tried pegging them in in different spots. I tried pegging it in there, that just looks wrong. They just kind of rest here. They can hold weapons if we can find some, but they don't really do much. They just kind of sit there and flop about, which is a shame. I'm not saying it doesn't look good. It does. It's just not the best thing to play with. And here are the three of them together, all ready to go, ready to start something. They're a decent size, as you saw before. They are roughly the same size as a leader class Transformer. Maybe just a smidge bigger. I mean, here's leader class Megatron from Armada, roughly the same size. 
Now, as you could guess, these combine into one single giant robot. Now, to start that process, we're going to take the robot modes and we're actually going to disassemble them and break them apart into different components. And for the hovercraft, split it apart. For the submarine, split it apart. For the actual battleship, don't split it apart, but do fold up the arms and then reach inside and fold in the head. And then these will fold up like it. And the legs will ratchet like that. And then we gotta do some magic to these legs. So the magic I was talking about is, is simply folding up the toes and smushing them back up like that. And then taking the arms and making sure that they are up all the way. And ah, this thing is, needs to be in place. And up like that. And pull the front of the boats off. Get these guys all the way up. Like so. Going back. And then those guns will actually snap in and peg into these little peg holes on the sides. And we're just about good to go. I missed something. The arms actually don't fold up. You need to fold them all the way down, extend them like that, and then bend them so that they are bending back. They're, it's weird. Like one wants to bend at 90 degrees like that one, but that one doesn't. Good old fashioned brute force pulling that arm out and then you could turn it 90 degrees. All right, we got the torso ready. Let's go ahead and get some feet. And speaking of feet, hi, this is gonna be feet. These are gonna be feet. This is the way the foot needs to be when we have everything set up. So to get to that, first off, take the front of the pylon and fold it down. Come to the inside of the shin, flip out that yellow piece and flip this up and then take the robot toe and fold that up and it will peg into what was the shin. Take the leg and make sure it's straightened out on the blue all the way up, fold it in like this and then ratchet this back one. Just get it lined up. Then what we're trying to do is to get this little yellow corner piece to go in right there. And if I've got everything lined up correctly, it should just go in there like that. There we go. All right, we have got some lower legs ready to go. So then what we can do is just come in here and a snap of these things into place. Now the kicker is, once we have it snapped into place, there is this little protrusion off of the yellow piece right there that will peg into the inside of the, of the leg. So what I like to do is take the foot, snap it, un, kind of undo it, snap it into place first, ratchet it down, and then come in and close the yellow piece up. So we get it pegged in on the bottom, and we get it pegged into the red part right there. And that is snug and in place and is not going anywhere. So let's do the second one and get some feet. Something I also forgot is the tab that comes off that shin actually slides up into the bottom of what was the figure, or the top of what was the ship's robot mode's foot. So that adds an extra bit of stability to the connection. For the top of the hovercraft torso, what we're going to do is essentially just kind of flip it around, point it so it's facing straight down, grab the head, unpeg it, and flip it up and around. So we want it to actually sit like this. Reach underneath and flip up the tower. Take the cannons and flip them down. Take the arms and actually turn them around so that the inside of or these tabs that are on either side of the head, flip them around and peg them into place. And then take the arms and turn them around and just kind of point them down a little bit at an angle. The same thing on the other side, turn it around, snap it into place, take the arm, turn it and point it down. And then this whole thing will drop down on top of that. 
and we'll peg in via this slot right here. So bring that down and snap that sucker into place. And then you can bring the tower and it'll drop over the radar tower and peg into place right like that. Now for the submarine, taking the lower quarters, we are going to actually return this to its submarine form. So unpeg everything and flip it up and around. Flippity-doo, flippity-da, and flippity-dee. And just do that for this side. Because what we're going to do is then snap everything back together and give him an arm. Because that piece... Oh, come on. Uh. All right, now that we've got that back piece combined, take this section and actually rotate it up, flip it around, and then it's going to snap into place. All right, now that we've got a submarine that fists people, take the area by the where the tubes are for the, long, for the missiles and just flip them straight up and snap that into place because what we want to do is then fold that out and do that on both sides so we can give him or it its own arm like that. Ta -da. Next, come to the propeller and un or open up the bottom and then pull out the missile like that. Close that up and then this whole thing will snap into place on the back of the combined robot mode. Now just peg in right there and then what I like to do is wrap the other arms around it like that, just hold everything in place. And then put the giant combined mode off to the side and we'll take a look at the arm because I got it pegged in and we'll come back over here. Now we are going to return him to his submarine mode first. All right, we return the upper torso of the submarine back into its sub mode. So where do we go from here? First, leave the tower. You know, when it's in sub mode, it's normally like that. So unpeg it, flip it around, and move it to the back. Then take the front of the sub mode and split it in half. This is just easier to do once you have the figure as a sub, as opposed to prior to it. And then we will flip out the connector port so it'll connect up like that. Take the entire section and kind of fold it. Ah, shoot, I, I transformed it. Fold the elbow at this little joint. Then take the bottom part and flip it up like this. And it will peg into several different spots, but it will peg up into the back of this, kind of like that to give it an elbow. It ain't pretty, but it does technically work. And then lastly, take the missile and just slide that in and there's a peg in there that it'll sit on like that. And then attach the arm. The combined mode we end up with looks pretty darn good, but is very fiddly. We'll talk about that more in a minute. I love the coloring that we've got going on here. Everything works color wise and everything pretty much holds together. I think the head sculpt could be a little bit cooler, especially considering it's just one of the robot heads. We ran into that issue with the three Marine Morphers military set, but I'm fine with it. The thing I'm not fine with is the head itself, the way it's sitting. It's really, really bad and kind of and very limited because you can't look any more forward. In order to do that, you have to lift the head up, which looks like you're detaching it from the rest of the body. I mean, hell, you could do this, and that looks equally silly. I don't like the way the head is sitting. I suspect that the, it's just because the chin is too big. That's the long and short of it. Overall, aesthetic-wise, very cool. Function-wise, 
uh, it's not great. It's more of a display piece than anything else. You've got a lot of bits that don't peg in, especially when you turn the figure around. You've got the ship robot arms and you've got the hovercraft robot arms just sitting there and they'll, you know, do their thing. The lack of heels is a real problem. This figure is very top heavy, so it does have a tendency to fall backwards quite a bit, especially if you've with the extra weight of these arms, because oddly enough, these arms die cast metal on the little black parts. So that adds some weight up there. Posability wise, head is on a ball joint, shoulders are on ratchets. The right shoulder doesn't move at all, or the right elbow, I should say, doesn't really move because the way these two pieces connect, the left shoulder moves, but you have to be very careful because even though it's ratcheted, it doesn't sit very tightly. And as soon as you start moving things, it, the ratchet is tight enough that it snaps and vibrates other pieces off, specifically these ship pieces that attach to the back of the hovercraft. And I did that wrong because that is supposed to sit flush and pick in to that piece, but he ain't doing that. And every time I pick the dang thing up, I knock off the propeller off the back. I just do. Bend at the elbow is possible. You've got, uh, that's because that's the giant robot or the submarine robot's knees. Every time I move the arms, the shoulders come unpegged. Fist does rotate, hand opens up, thumb does not move at all, unfortunately. The legs can kick forward and can kick back. They're on ratchets, but they're not real tight. They can kick out, but they do hit um, this little bit with the kibble. If you take the gun off, it can go out farther. Bend at the knee is 90 degrees, uh, no foot articulation, but you do have toe articulation. So you can pull off poses. And if I had a flight stand that could hold this figure up, I would use it. Like if I had a really nice, super strong flight stand, I would use that instead of just letting this figure stand on its own. So because of the weight issue, I really do like it. I really, really do. But it's very fiddly in combined mode. You just kind of want to combine it and leave it alone. Size comparison time, Siege Jetfire, Commander Class Ultra Magnus, Legacy Armada Prime, Space Jetman with Pet Lion on stand, Quantum Heroes set number one, Quantum Heroes set number two, Titan Class Deceptimami, and Titan Class Autodad. Voyager Inferno, Voyager Ratchet, Voyager Armada Starscream, Leader Grimlock, and Leader Skyquake. Pretty cool. I do like it quite a bit, flaws and all. It's just fun and neat, and we've never gotten anything like this before, especially in the Transformers space. I mean, how many Transformers do you know that turn into a hovercraft? Two. And they are both sea spray. How many submarines are there in the Transformers world? There's Dive Dive on the GoBot side, but submarine and Transformers is one, unless you count Nautica. Technically, Nautica is a submersible. And then boats. How many boats are there in Transformers? I can think of Manta Ray from G2. I can think of Broadside. Those are the only ones coming to mind right off the top of my head. So, yeah, we have three transforming, seagoing vessels that then merge into a giant robot. Flaws? Yeah, there are plenty. But I still love this set, and it's totally worth picking up, especially for only 40 bucks. And shipping was like another 10. Link to that AliExpress page is down in the description. So, folks, let me know what you think of the ships down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I am Bolt Matrix. Do the YouTube thing. Like, comment, subscribe. You know all that jazz. As this is my last video of 2023, I wish you all a wonderful and happy new year. I've been Bolt Matrix, and I will catch you all next time.